Hey, what's up, guys? Um, I'm gonna make another quick video. I uh, wanted to make this video about fighting, gang stalking, and organized harassment is what I prefer to call it. Um, that guy Maverick hit me up last night on Messenger at about 7:22, and then when I went to message him back. I said, hey man, how did it go at Target? And it said he wasn't accepting messages right now. And then when I went to look him up on Facebook, I guess he had blocked me because I wasn't able to find him at all. But uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to go over. Um, <clears throat> I mean, spyware, spyware. I was watching one of Garuchula Joe's videos and he said that he had had a friend that he would hang out with and the guy liked to drink beer and uh, the guy got up and went to the bathroom to go pee and he put the spyware on his phone and uh, I think if you want to start fighting this you got to be proactive about it I mean sure if you're one of those people who want to just live your life and ignore it that's fine you know but <clears throat> I mean, some of us need to get out there and ex start exposing this. Um, but get some spyware on your phone. There's Web Watcher is a good app. I don't have it, but and it's pretty expensive. Or an app similar to that. I mean, you get it on your phone. I don't know how they work, but you can install it really quick. Um, you, di diplomacy works best. Jerusalem Joe says, and I, despite myself, I found that to be true. I mean, these people will co-op those around you, especially your friends. So if you want to expose them, you got to be proactive. Another thing is, you'll hear this from a lot of TIs: is you got to use that camera. You know, you got to pull it out and start using it. And I know all of this is time-consuming, and it's some of these methods cost money, but. I mean, how badly do you want this to go away? I, for one, would like to live my life, be left alone, and be able to work a normal job. Um, so use that camera, take pictures, record shady situations, like I've, I've said before. You know, people, these people hate cameras and it fucks them up. It wipes that smile right off their face. And, uh, I mean, you, and you don't know when you've won with these people. They're not going to tell you when you've won. And for all we know, you know, they probably get put on some kind of suspension or some kind of probation if you take their picture. And, I mean, me, I have a folder on my computer that I'll stop volunteering so much information. All I know is that I'm compiling, I'm compiling pictures and I'm looking for a place to start posting these pictures. Um, <clears throat> so, if anybody knows how to design websites, or if anybody knows of a place where you can post a picture, pictures of these people, let me know. I doubt anything like that exists, but you never know. Um, you know and you got to talk about it with people you trust. You gotta stop calling it gang stalking. It's organized harassment. You gotta explain it intelligently. I've been able to do that for the most part. You know, like with the the V2K. That's gang stalking. Is, organized harassment is one side of it. Electronic harassment is another side of it. You've got the V2K. I mean, when you can explain that, some of it I don't like to go into like the, the nanotechnology and how it's self-replicating and all that, but like the V2K, um, I mean, there are devices that's documented in history where there was 150 or something Saudi soldiers who had surrendered in a, in a, hot, in a situation where they bugged in and they disassembled their weapons and surrendered because they all heard the voice of God. I mean, this is in history. You can look it up on the internet. And it was later, we came, the government came out and said that we had done this to them with LRAD devices. LRAD, long-range acoustic devices. And these are the kinds of devices that these people are using. 
I mean, there's a couple of good videos that you can show people about this stuff. Like one, there's one Garuchula Joe's video, The Truth About Gang Stalking. It's either part one or part two. That's one of the videos that I show people. And that's a good, I mean, he explains it straight out. And I mean, that's, he's somebody who knows how the government works. <clears throat> uh, I mean, the thing, you gotta stop calling it gang stalking. We have to stop calling it that because it's not, it's organized harassment. And the two things I don't like about it is the way it sounds. You know, people think street gangs are involved as soon as they hear that word. As soon as it hits the ears, they're like, oh, well, yeah, I've heard about that. That's when street gangs are following you around. It's like, no. Um, and the other thing is it gives them too much power, which it's all a big fucking mind game. You know, and it's, it gives them, it just sounds, it gives them way too much power. Words have power, and oh, not everybody realizes that. Um, like, when you say cheap, as opposed to inexpensive, you know, it's, it does something to the brain. It, I mean, it hits the ear differently. They mean the same thing, kind of, but... Anyway, it's just a small example. And the word stalking, the one thing I don't like about that is it's, it, you know, people think that it's something sexual or obsessive, and it's, it's fucking not, dude. It's like, this is something completely different. This is organized harassment. We need to stop calling it gang stalking because it's organized harassment. And I know I repeat myself a lot, but I think repetition is good. You know, it's... They, they hear the word stalking, and it's almost laughable because it's like, you know, oh, somebody, somebody wants to fuck you, somebody wants to, somebody wants to fuck you, do they? Somebody's obsessed with you. It's like, no, it's not about that. I mean, I was talking to somebody in their early 50s, and they said something interesting. They were saying pretty much like back in the, the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I mean, a guy stalking a girl was almost acceptable behavior back then because we didn't have all these cell phones and internet and email and all of that, you know what I mean? So it was, it was what's that one movie with uh, John Cusack where he's standing outside that girl's house downstairs in the driveway with a, holding a radio up over his head. He's wearing that, that, that tan trench coat I mean, this this shit is in movies back then. I mean, it's... I mean, back then it was almost acceptable behavior. It wasn't so weird. So when I talk about this with people who are part of the older generation, you know, they, they almost laugh at the idea. This is organized harassment. I mean, you're not being stalked. You're being harassed. Uh, and another thing is... It was Targeted Individual Ireland. They give me an idea that fightgangstalking.com has a flyer that's written out very intelligently and it explains, you know, it's like a, it's like a cautionary tale in gang stalking and what it's all about. It clearly explains that it has nothing to do with street gangs and all of that. What you ought to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out, I'm going to buy one or two reams of printer paper, you know, a couple of reams of paper, some ink cartridges, and I'm going to print out a bunch of these flyers because they, I've been told that when you do this, you print out a bunch of flyers and you pass them out, it stops. I mean, it really calms down. These people do not like to be exposed and they like to mind fuck you into thinking that powerless, you don't have any control over the situation, and that it's never going to end. <clears throat> I mean, this is a tough thing to prove, but if you get something like Web Watcher on your phone, it's something kind of app that you can, some kind of spyware you can put on these people's phones, I mean, you got to work, <laughs> I mean, sometimes I contradict myself, but I'm starting to think, 
diplomacy does work best. You kind of have to make friends with these people if you if you can help it. You know, I fucking the hardest thing for me sometimes is putting on a smile when I fucking really have a chip on my shoulder because of this. Like, it's fucking hard. Like, you don't. I mean, I don't like feeling like an idiot. You know what I mean? When it's because you. You walk around smiling, being friendly with these people, they're going to think you're stupid. Well, that's fine. Sometimes you want people to think you're stupid because then they'll expose themselves. Um, I mean, I don't know how far this go, how far back this goes for me, but I mean, when I was <laughs> back in 2004, you know, I was about 19. I was, I was up all night drinking. I drove to the store to get a pack of cigarettes. It was this little shopping center where all the stores were closed down except for this little liquor store. And it looked like the place was about to be torn down. But, I mean, the parking lot was empty except for maybe two cars plus mine. So I park, I walk in, I buy a pack of cigarettes, and uh, I start smoking one. I, I stop outside the front door and I start smoking one and uh, I see a like a a wire frame news rack with like these it's like a Nordstrom catalog with lingerie models on the cover you know so <laughs> I'm thinking I'm gonna grab one of those and all of a sudden this Caltrans like a city utilities vehicle pulls up a white truck and the driver he doesn't get out, he just sits there. So I'm like, well, fuck, dude. And for some reason, you know, I, back then I was not aware of it. I didn't even, wasn't paranoid at all. Like, he's just sitting in his truck and I'm thinking, fuck, dude, I want to grab one of those magazines and go, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I'm sitting there smoking my cigarette. This guy's sitting in his truck. The whole time I'm feeling like, is, is this guy watching me? And then, so I finished my cigarette, and I put it out, and I just, this guy's still there, and I say, okay, fuck it, so I'm, I'm just going to grab one. So I grab one of these lingerie catalogs, and I look at the guy, and he's laughing to himself. He's laughing and shaking his head, and he puts his truck in drive, and drives off, and I'm, I'm just left sitting there like, what the fuck was that all about? Like, that was back in 2004. That was when I, when I think back and connect some dots, I really, that was when weird stuff started happening. Very sporadic, very sparse, but weird stuff nonetheless. And, uh, anecdotally, in hindsight, it was kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, I mean, back in 2007, when I had an apartment uh, in a different city, I, uh, uh, these neighbors moved in underneath me. It was this black guy and this this uh, Hispanic girl, this Latina girl, and dude, they would just fuck like animals, just loud as fuck at all hours of the night, just loud as fuck with their windows open, just fucking boom, boom, boom. Like, dude, like, why don't you close the fucking windows, dude? And, uh, and another thing they did was they would just slam the fucking doors, like, 10, 15, 20 times a day, slamming that motherfucking door as hard as they could, slamming that fucking door, like, dude, it got to the point where I started joining in, like, getting mad, I would hear it, and I would go to my door, open it, and slam that fucking thing, just be like, dude, do you realize what you're doing? And then after about four months of this, I was leaving, or I was coming back to my apartment, I walked up to the door and they were leaving and I remember approaching them about it real politely you know I was like hey um, you guys I don't know if you notice sometimes but you really like slam your door your front door a lot throughout the day and the black guy got all like got all indignant like I think you're being paranoid and I was just like <laughs> all right so I just went back in my apartment and I got fucking mad, dude. Like, 
really fucking mad. And, uh, I mean, again, this is back in 2007, and I wasn't really aware of, I wasn't aware of anything, but periodically weird shit like that would happen. And if you think outside of yourself as a TI, you're not the only one. There are a lot of people going through this. They could have been harassing somebody else. They could have been harassing me. Who knows? I don't know. But the point is, is that your neighbors are involved a lot of times. And what's more is that your friends will be co-opted into this shit and they will become involved. So you really have to, well, I've been really friendly with all the, this, a lot of the people leaving comments and I don't know who's a fucking perp and who's not, you know? I just, like I've said, I, I have a good attitude and I treat people with respect, but some of these people out there are saying that I'm not a TI, I'm a perp and this and that. You know, I wouldn't put my fucking name on, I wouldn't have put my name on my channel if I was a perp, and I wouldn't be making these videos like I do if I was a perp, so, you know, I don't really feel the need to fucking explain myself. This shit happens, and it's made my life very difficult, so, um, yeah, so, <clears throat> spyware, get web watcher or an app like it you know diplomacy works best start making friends with these people I know it's really hard I wouldn't say make friends but you know keep it light you know keep your friends close keep your enemies closer it sounds cliche but it's true if you want to expose these people you got to be proactive and one of the best ways to do that is to get a hold of their phone put some spyware on it and uh, you know, you, you'll start receiving that feed, all their texts and all their phone calls. And if they're talking about you and your activities and what you're doing, you have cold hard proof that you can't fucking deny. I mean, this thing is going to come to an end sooner or later. Another thing is use your camera. Like I said, these people hate when you bust out that camera. You know, it wipes that fucking smile off their face. It fucks them up. For all we know, like I said, they could probably get in trouble, They'd probably get put on suspension or something. You never know when you've won a victory. They'll never tell you. So, you know, start taking chances. You know. Talk about it with people you know. Talk about it with people you trust and explain it intelligently. There are ways, there are videos you can show them. Like Garuchula Joe, like I said, has a good one. It's called The Truth About Gang Stalking. I think it's part two. I'm not sure. It's either part one or the truth about gang stalking, part one or part two by Garuchula Joe. That's one of the videos I show people to explain this. And with the V2K aspect, you know, LRAD devices, long range acoustic devices are being used. They were used back in uh, the Gulf War. 150 Saudi Arabian soldiers surrendered and disassembled their weapons because they all heard the voice of God. I mean, this is all part of fucking history. It's all documented. It's out there. You, there are ways to explain this intelligently, you know. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, we gotta change up the lingo. I mean, this is, stop calling it gang stalking. This is organized harassment. Because <sighs> uh, like I said, words have power. thing is fightgangstalking.com has a flyer that you can download as a PDF print out. I'm going to go get a couple of reams of printer paper and some ink, some ink cartridges and print these things out and start passing them out because you know, I don't give a shit what people think anymore. You know, If they want to think I'm crazy, they can think I'm crazy all they fucking want. I know what's going on. Um, point is, is you have to really keep your cool when you're explaining this. You can get mad. Um, and I think that's about it. I got about 20 seconds left before my camera's going to shut off. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, I'll talk to you later.